That's right, the Weaver's Needle. Hey everybody, welcome back to Trail 89 Adventures. I'm Todd. Today I'm outside of Queen Valley in Superior, Arizona, and I'm running Montana Mountain Loop Trail. It's a 30 plus mile loop that really gets you into the back country. So come along with me today and check it out. As you can see, the scenery at the beginning of this trail is is awesome. Lots of saguaro cactus, and if you look real close, right up here you'll see Elephant Arch. It's a natural stone arch, and if you were driving by and you weren't looking for it, you might drive right by it because it kind of blends in with the background there. But um, overall here, the first part of this trail, pretty neat so far. I'm about 10 miles into the trail and I measured that from the staging area right where Tonto National Forest starts on this trail and you come up to this corral area and I haven't seen any cattle out here yet but I know that uh, you know these areas like Tonto National Forest and all the state trust lands there's a lot of ranching going on here so you can see in the background we've got a windmill back there and some old water tanks it doesn't look like these are usable anymore they're kind of shot up but there are some new plastic tanks over there that uh, i guess could be used for this but it's always neat looking at these things because you know they're aged and they're old and they're weathered and they're sitting out here in the arizona desert summertime but uh, it's just kind of neat to stop and look at some of these things when i first walked up here i didn't even realize this I, I thought this was just some old branches and twigs and stuff but it is a bunch of barbed wire it's so rusted it looks like it belongs here but yeah i think that's got tetanus shot written all over it definitely don't, don't want to get scratched up by that thing right there You know, I'm always talking about things that catch me right out of the corner of my eye. And as I was going down the trail right here, this pile of white rocks <laughs> caught my eye because it doesn't belong out here in the desert. But uh, it's just a marker for a mining claim. So I'm assuming maybe it's uh, the corner of a mining claim, but it doesn't give me a date on here and half this sign is ripped off. But every once in a while, you'll see these signs like this that uh, outline a mining claim. So... Yep, like I said, things that catch you out of the corner of your eye going down these trails sometimes. Oh, I just saw this here. Right down here, there's a, looks like a stone wall, almost like a tank, like a water tank. So, I don't know if that has anything to do with the mining or maybe if that's for cattle, but it is right there on the side of this wash. So, that's kind of interesting right there. Up here in the distance is a white looks like a white post maybe that's another corner of this mining thing but that's the only other one that i see but i mean they could be anywhere definitely picking up some elevation gain now you can see this part of the trail the water flows right over the trail down there and you can see here this is where we're going to go up here in a minute but the water comes from right up here so definitely a lot of water running through here
about 15 miles into the trail right now and I just thought I'd stop and take a break, get a little coffee. And you can see I'm about to go up this uh, switch back right over here. But if I turn the camera and you take a look at what you can see from 15 miles up Montana Mountain, can't beat that from a scenery piece, I don't think. So far the trail has been, I've only seen one other person, only one other Jeep and I passed him coming up and he ended up going right back down. But that was it for a Sunday morning. I thought I would see some more people out here more than what I've seen. But, uh, you know, maybe later, I don't know. This is about 15 and a half miles into the trail from the trailhead. And this is the biggest obstacle that is on the trail yet. Most of this trail has been packed rock, packed dirt road until you get to here. And you can see some folks have thrown some rocks in here. And this is uh, this part here really wasn't, wasn't bad, but you can come up here to the left, take that line. It did uh, hit skid plate a little bit, but yeah. Went over it for high, didn't even put it in for low for this. But I did uh, I did have a little spin out right here. And I think I hit my skid plate maybe on this guy right here. But other than that, uh, it's the only obstacle so far. But I'm about to go up here, turns to the left. It's almost like ski moguls is what I would relate it to. There's a couple of pretty good obstacles when you get to the top of this mountain. Uh, you saw some of those rocks that, that I was climbing over there a little bit ago, and now it's kind of flattened out. We're 
almost like at the plateau going around the side of Montana Mountain. And this is uh, just dirt and a lot of just rocks, right? Like almost like river rocks, but everything's got a, a red tone to it. And when you get up to here, you know, you're going through the forest, lots of pine trees up here and other trees. So lots of different environment on this trail. There you have it, the million dollar view. It's really windy up here. Beautiful day. This right here reminds me of the horseshoe curve that I took on an Amtrak train through Pennsylvania one time. You can see the trail runs through here, goes around, and heads all the way back that way. So if there was a train here, you'd be able to see the engine and the caboose all at the same time going around there. I just remember that when I was a kid, taking that train and this area reminds me of that for sure. The northeast side of this trail, as it wraps around Montana Mountain, it uh, there's a lot of drop-offs, very steep drop-offs. So if you're not into shelf road driving or you're afraid of heights, that can be a challenge, especially when we start going down the switchbacks. But everything you see here to the left of the road, again, I'm on the northeast side of, of this trail, everything to the left is superstition wilderness. Uh, this whole trail runs through Tonto National Forest, but only part of it uh, gets close to the superstition wilderness. So that's what's on your left here. There's no roads back there. You can't fly drones in there. There are some hiking trails back there. Okay, so I just stopped here at the very beginning of the switchbacks. You can see here, the road kind of goes around here and loops around to the uh, beginning of the switchbacks, but you can see the trail way down there at the bottom of the hill. So that's what we're going to be going down here in just a few minutes, but I thought this would be a good spot to stop and uh, take a break before we head down the hill.
Okay, almost to the bottom of the switchbacks. You can see here, this is the trail I was pointing out to you before from the top of the mountain. And we are significantly lower in elevation compared to that. I just went down this switchback right here. And if I turn, you can see closer to the top where it started, way up here, in fact, kind of on the back side of that. And if you look close, you can see the road kind of switch back and back and forth down through there. And then it just comes right down through here. So a little bit further to go, but almost to the bottom. You can see this is the trail. I mean, it's fairly rocky. It seems smoother than the last time that I went through this. I went through last fall and it really appears that maybe they came through and did a little bit of grading to it because there was a lot more potholes and uh, ruts in here from the storms we had last fall. But overall, fairly smooth, you know, for a rock and dirt road. But there's a couple of rocks sticking out here, like this guy here. That'll get you if you don't have enough clearance, but it was a pretty good descent. Not too challenging, but again, like I said earlier, shelf road and steep drop-offs. So if you're okay with that, this is a, this is a great trail. Last fall when I ran this trail, there's a spot at about 25 miles in that crosses over a wash and then goes straight up a hill and then curves to the right. Last fall, that was completely washed out. I know we had some rains and things like that, but I had to use Ford Low. I had to put my lockers on just to get up that hill. They came through here and they regraded all of this and I just drove right up it in four high, no problem at all. In fact, I even, I had to double check to see if it was the same spot, like that's how much work they put into the road. So they definitely went through and graded that section. They, it appears they graded the switchbacks as well because those were uh, a lot smoother than they were previously. So the weather plays a big factor here when the, when it rains and the, creates those ruts in the roads out here. You never know what you're going to get, but today it's been been pretty smooth sailing all the way all the way through the trail. Okay, wrapping up, Montana Mountain Trail, about 32 miles from staging area to staging area. That's where I, I measured it from. So any of the mileage that I gave you throughout the trail, um, it's from the west side staging area where at the very beginning of Tonto National Forest. Uh, about 3,800 feet in elevation gain going up the mountain and then you lose about 3,500 coming down to the other staging area. This one's right on the US 60. So uh, about four and a half hours it took me to do this one. Stopped at the top, you know, just kind of chilled out for a little while, was taking some video. I would tell you the trail condition is a lot better than it was in the fall of 2021 is when I last ran this. And um, pretty, I don't want to say smooth, but definitely a lot easier to run than it was last time because there weren't nearly as many ruts and washouts as there were after the summer rains last year. But uh, this is a great trail. Um, it will take a while for you to get through it and it is it is a loop. So once you're, once you're way in the back, I mean, it, it takes a while for you to get back to the trailhead. But uh, it's a nice run, it's enjoyable and uh, you get to see all the different elements. You get to see desert, you get to see the canyons, you get to see the forest at the top of the mountain. Just a lot of different diversity in the uh, in the environment. So neat trail. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Well, 
Well, that was a little bit of a climb to come back and get the camera. Holy smokes. <laughs> uh.